um, population uh, statistics just got released based on the census for last year and uh, found that uh, 800 the population dropped by 800 850,000 that would be way too many was that what it was um, was it 85,000 or 800 it might have been 850,000 um, certainly yeah Japan has dropped out uh, there we go it dropped oh in fact the number of newborns dropped to 840,000 um, oh, but there we go. The population dropped by 868,000 from 2015. And Japan is no longer in the top 10 most populous nations in the world. It is remarkable. I mean, again, when you think about the whole history of the 20th century, um, the modernization of Japan. Um, Japan was a bit like very similar. I mean, there's so many parallels between Japan and the UK, uh, including um, how the Industrial Revolution uh, and the uh, improvements in medicine that happened, particularly in the 19th century, um, and 20th century with uh, Japan's modernization meant that because ch infant mortality was just such a thing, it was pretty typical. And uh, doing a bit of genealogy myself on UK history, it's pretty pretty common that um, I remember like when I was looking at my own sort of family history and people up in Yorkshire in um, you know the, the 16th and 17th century. And I remember seeing that there was a, a time when the family, uh, it, there were like uh, registered, like 12 registered kids. And like four of them were called John. And I thought it was hilarious that they couldn't think of a name other than John. But then I then you realize when you looked at it, oh, the most of the Johns didn't make it past a few months. So they, they really wanted a John. The father's name was John. So they kept naming the next kid, you know, hoping that they would that they would uh, take on only like out of 12 kids born. Only four of them actually survived infancy to, to grow up like in, in this particular family that I saw it. It was actually kind of dark. And it was the same in Japan. Everyone was used to having lots of kids, but also used to most of the kids not surviving. Um, so when medicine and standard of living and everything improved dramatically in the 19th century and the 20th century, the population exploded because everyone was used to having 12 kids and not all of them surviving. And all of a sudden they all survived. UK, you had the overpopulation, which led to Britain going on a bit of a, a, a rampage with the British Empire and setting up colonies, which were basically, you know, transportation was a solution for overpopulation. Uh, America exists and Australia exists because of these sorts of things. Um, and I'm me being born where I was born is because of this. Japan didn't have an empire. This is the thing. Japan, by the 1920s, was incredibly overpopulated. From In a very short period of time, the population exploded. And they didn't have anywhere to go. And they, they wanted to do what everyone else did. They, you know, they went and wanted to grab some land to go and uh, put people on. Um, so very, very connected to World War II and all the events of the 20th century, the population explosion in Japan. And, and also, you know, Japan really, um, without being as coercive as China, took the initiative for really getting population down from the 70s. But, you know, now falling precipitously, I mean, losing nearly a million people a year right now. And people are saying that, you know, probably by 2040s or 2050s, I, I, I remember seeing some estimate that Japan could be down to like, you know, 70 million people, uh, actually. Uh, based on current rates of decline in the, the, the you know demographics. So certainly, you know, falling a lot. And I, I, again, some other articles reflecting on this, saying that, you know, again, given, one, do you have to maintain population is an interesting question. Do you, do you need immigration to replace the falling population? It sort of is given as a given that in order to maintain economic growth, um, you know, in order to maintain and presumably from economic growth the well-being of the economy and all the people that you have to maintain population at least yeah you know at the same time japan's kind of not really trying to do that as you can see it is it is increasing immigration dramatically but not at the same levels that population is declining um and it seems that the policy in japan is to manage the decline down to that number and you know japan's the same size as new zealand the same size as uk the same size as california and it has 120 million people so even 70 million people would still be quite a lot given the space of land. Um, I do feel like Japan is still always missing out on the opportunity to manage the population decline in a way that improves the standard of living for everybody left. Like, for example, the problem with abandoned houses and no one having a plan for what to do with them to improve living space and so on. But it is a fact that, um, you know, certainly the idea that Japan, I mean, Japan became a major world power in spite of its size and lack of resources simply because everyone was used to having a lot of kids and medicine improved all of a sudden um you know during the meiji period and that led to its sort of uh, its superpower status that is that is not going to happen again um japan's going to keep declining at least in terms of population ranking and you know and, and the countries that are going to be the next superpowers again you look at the numbers um are going to be increasingly in develop you know what we consider now to be developing world countries um could very well be 21st century 22nd century countries like nigeria um, you know, um, could very well become, you know, global superpowers. Um, 
theoretically, I mean, that's what that's what they should be. Countries like India, I suppose, already should be, but they're not. But um, yeah, certainly, I, I think interesting times, uh, and certainly interesting to see that Japan is continuing to decline in that regard. Christopher Luke, it's kind of funny that uh, all the science fiction always makes Japan uh, the overpopulated place in the future. Well, I guess, I mean, you know, a lot of great science fiction came from the 80s, and if you were at that time still drawing lines, I mean, people in the 70s had stopped making babies, but there was still that, that, that hadn't really started to impact on the population yet, right? Um, it wasn't until those people who were having kids in the 70s um, are now getting to the you know age of mortality that it's actually that that their lack of kids to to follow after them is now affecting the population. So yeah, I think it it, it was uh, you know people drawing lines when Japan's economic bubble was on a, on a trajectory like the vaccine line, <laughs> it was going to overtake everybody. Um, you know, um, and, and everyone made these movies about Japan economically dominating at this time, which obviously wasn't the case. Population dominating. Everyone was looking at the sort of growth of technology. Again, it just shows that there's there's so many things that everyone presumes that you just uh you can't join line you know it's a trap to think you can join dots on a graph and make a line and that's going to be an accurate prediction of what's to come japan's a great example of that you know the curve is is has not been uh what what's preceded doesn't mean i think that japan still can't be awesome i mean again i'm still pretty comfortable being here but uh but yeah yeah it's true um, that uh, a lot of the science fiction definitely overestimated Japan's position and influence in the future.